And we're on. Well, back, ladies and gentlemen. Everybody that's obviously tuned in, we don't know if anybody is yet that isn't actually telling us up in the top right corner, top left corner. But listen, me and Joe are back again. It is international break, but listen, right, the Borough Show does not go away. Unfortunately for anybody out there, it always stays there. Me and Joe are here. Borough is still going strong. Ten games unbeaten, I believe it is now. Ten or eleven. Is that many? Is that many unbeaten games that have been? And I keep forgetting how many games actually is. Uh, well, but it is ten. We'll go with ten. Uh, cause... And then we'll we'll move we'll move on to eleven. We'll, we'll get to eleven. Yeah, yeah. Well, like I say it could be eleven against Norwich. It could be two black pumps scoring a winner and breaking out my dance. It could, it could be a lot uh, of things. I'll be it's done, been... mate. If he does that, I'll be dying. I promise. <laughs> Honest, that was crazy, mate. Crazy. Oh. But over the weekend, yeah. Yeah, well, I say two black pump. Did I? Did I? Did I think he was going to reply back to me? No, I didn't. But. When I'd, when I'd done the dance, I thought to myself, do you know what it is? I reckon Marvin Johnson could do it, because let's say Marvin talks to me quite a bit. Yeah. So obviously, you know, I messaged him and he just sort of like laughed about it. He's like, no. So I thought, oh, and no problem. I asked Akpong, I thought, British on Belonga, I don't know how sociable he is. I don't really see him posting much. I spoke to him at yeah. two borough games, you know, like spoke to him as he's come out. And he's been yeah. but really, really friendly and actually had a conversation. Do you know what I mean? So I yeah, yeah. I think he's quite he's quite Fletcher's really nice though, isn't he? He's a he's a really yeah, nice Fletcher's, guy. Fletcher's wicked to be fair. Yeah. yeah. But like I say, ask an act bomb and straight away it went boom, straight away. Oh yeah, of course. I was like, oh like, fair enough, listen, right? If you're gonna do it, you're gonna do it. But honestly, it'd be the funniest thing if you honestly if he does it because uh, I think you know, get kicked that recorded with the message for the rest of your life. How on earth how on earth would he do it though? I'm thinking like in, in the so in the video you've got to basically burn your hand or hurt your hand or catch something. I'm thinking like, I think like he, he would just do the I just think he would do the bit without, you know, the dance almost, you know, like yeah, the, the, yeah, yeah. Of the music. I think that would be the celebration. Nothing shite like Alan Shearer. Yeah, imagine that. Imagine a borough player doing your dance. If you... Oh, mate. It would be mental. <laughs> it would be scenes, mate. Imagine. I mean, that would be outrageous. Like I said to you the other day, I'd be crying. I'd be mate. so happy. Especially if it was the winner as well. It would be so much imagine. better. Imagine. You know, you know, you know, we're from Akpom, right? I thought Akpom was a rookie on Saturday. But listen, I'll get to his chance in a minute. We're still unbeaten, as I've already said. It's it, listen, it's great being unbeaten after ten games. I'm going to be honest with anybody out there. It's a great feeling going to games, knowing that you are defensively sound, which we haven't had under Woodgate really. We didn't really have under Monk. We didn't really have a defensive. No, we didn't. Have that. We haven't had that. We haven't had that since Karanka. We've got to give Karanka credit. I don't think we've had that since Karanka. Yeah. In fairness, and I think defensively under Warnock than we are Karanka. Um. I think we were just more complete, more of a complete team under Karanka, even though he was playing people out of position. I think we were just a little bit more complete. But yeah. we're, we're definitely better um, defensively under Thingy. And what I really like is I think, and I haven't thought this in a long, 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 long time. Mm. Maybe, not, maybe not even as strong thought when we were with Karanka and we were, you know, the team to go up. I think we're the team that people don't want to play in that league. I yeah. genuinely believe that. Yeah, we're not top of the league, but I think a lot of teams would rather play top of the league than they would come to Middlesbrough because they know what they're getting. And yeah. we can nick a goal and it's going to be, they are going to have to, because we're we're running for 100 minutes if we have to. Do you know what I mean? We'll do extra time penalties every game. Oh, yeah. So yeah. They have to give. Their output has to be so strong and they slip up and it's game over. I think we're the, the feared team at the moment. Maybe not scoring and they're going to come at us and score a lot of goals, i.e. Leeds last season. They're going to score loads, but we're going to get one. We're going to, yeah. we're going to be able to score as well. And I'm not one of them. I oh, hate Leeds. They've done rubbish. They've done brilliant. You know what I mean? They were brilliant last season. Fair play to them. I don't like Leeds at all. <laughs> but fair play to them. Credit to them. But we're the team that no one wants to play. And what people need to understand is them goals are coming. And when them goals come, yeah. they, they'll come without the risk of do you know a lot of teams that start scoring goals they then start conceding but the way we play that doesn't 
that I, I don't believe that's going to be the process. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. No, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, I, so I look at Saturday and everyone before the game, pundits, everyone else, you know, you know, already writing off the butter, saying, you know, butter won't go there and get anything. And Brentford, right, before, I would say even under, oh, yeah, to be fair, so under Cranker, we could beat Brentford. It'd be a hard game, but Butter could beat Brentford. I remember that game we yeah. played at Christian Park when I bit of scored a penalty in the white strip and we yeah. got battered for 90 minutes. We shouldn't have come out with a win, but we did. That's the. That performance on Saturday took me back to, but it was just without the goal. And I look at it and I think, yeah, but Akpom could have got that goal. Akpom's chance was like written in the stars to be in the back of the net. I mean, how he turns that defender onto his left foot and then pings it over the top of the crossbar, he was unlucky. If that goes in, yeah. listen, I probably might get two or three. Do you know what I'm saying? So we can all, I think we can all agree to all the fickle fans that Akpom has got the ability in oh, his yeah. It's a confidence now. So, so we, we can all agree. Akpom's got the ability. He's without without a doubt he's got the ability. He now needs the confidence to be putting them chances away. Because yeah. you, know, you know, you still get it. You know, I'm on that Facebook group and I need to remove myself because I'm going to cut World War Three because I, I can't yeah. cope with these sort of fans. But it's like, oh, he's he's rubbish. He's rubbish because it, it, he's not rubbish. What watch, watch the game, watch the football match. He's not rubbish. Yeah. yeah. And, and for me. The goal scoring issue will go away when we have fit two fit strikers to play up top. Yeah, that's my opinion. I don't think people are going, Oh, we're not winning games because of Patrick Roberts. I don't agree. We're I want to see him though. It, it is, it is very, very well, frustrating not seeing him play. He's the guy that's going to create the most chances. Yeah, um, I'd like to see Norwich, I'd like to see maybe Johnson come in. Um, uh, I also would like to know what formation we were playing with that yeah, squad. True. On. I was like, you look at the squad, the team, the starting 11, and I'm like, what are we playing here? Yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? I think, but I'd like to see Johnson come in. And the reason that is, is as much as he, when he plays, he does frustrate me, a bit like Tavernier does, you know, when he starts. Yeah, yeah. Colson runs at people and has got he, he does make things but I think Johnson's finishing touch and, and last ball is just slightly better and I think yeah. it makes mm -hmm. a little, little bit of difference, you know what I mean and that's not, by playing Johnson that's not going to take away Robertson's place because Robertson's no, not not. playing from the right but based on the formation on Saturday yeah if Jed Spencer is your wing back and Colson is your wing back, then Tavernier was playing as a ten. Yeah. Why wasn't Roberts? Because as much as people can love Tavernier, he's nowhere near. He's nowhere near as good as Roberts. Well, I, I did find it interesting in Neil Warnock's interview after the Blackburn game when he said that maybe he's, he knew in his head that maybe he's, you know he should have took Roberts on, and I thought. Yeah. Then why against Brentford when it's nil nil and they were starting to back off last twenty minutes? Right, they actually started wasting a bit of time at the back. I'm thinking, why are you not throwing on Roberts now just to burst their back four and try and get the balls in the box? But then you've got to ask the question, which I'm asking you: Would yeah. you take the loss in the 85th minute like we're so used to doing? True. Or take the draw at Brentford because? Tavernier is a far better defender than Roberts. Yeah, far fair. better attracted back. I think, that, I I think being... that's what's keeping Roberts out of the team is his defensive capabilities. In my yeah. opinion, I don't think it's. Once, once it's back to two up front, he has to play him behind the two strikers for me. He has to be in the team every week from then. Right. So he plays two strikers. Yeah. My two strikers, you know, would be Fletcher and. Yeah, that 100%. I think Fletcher for me is our best striker. Yeah, still. Um, I still think he'll play Brit and Akpom, and then for obviously, so say Fletcher's out, Fletcher's injured, forget yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. So he plays the two strikers, Akpom and Brit. Who plays when from there for you? Akpom and Brit play, and for me, I think we go to a five, maybe it's a five three two. So 
obviously Akpom and Akpom it's Akpom and Fletcher go up front for me Britt doesn't get in the team he doesn't start the game until he starts actually and I'm sick of I, I, I saying it last week last week I got attacked on Twitter for saying that people were co-tweeting me and people calling me embarrassing for making a poll on Britt's on, 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 you know, you know why did you tag me to it because I would have gone to war mate. I I got, well I did a poll on Britt because after the Blackburn game everybody was slating him on Twitter and me being a Borough fan and you know what I mean I was like well, hang on, man. I'm actually, I'm actually going to try and run a poll and see if people genuinely want to see him in the team every week. See him actually at the football club or see him go. And I'll, I think it was something like 87 people have voted on it. And everyone went 50 50. And I remember you commenting with your eyes wide open. And it was like, okay, well, there you go. So why are there for people who actually voted probably then co tweeting and calling me embarrassing Borough fan? Apparently, age is not a Borough fan no more. I shouldn't be allowed inside the stadium. Hang on a second. You were all, all saying. During the game, he's awful. He's this. You call him every single name under the sun. I wrote a simple poll asking, should he stay at the club or should he go? And suddenly, I am at the worst number one enemy to middle football club. It's unbelievable, I, mate. It I really is. Lost. I don't have a clue what I'm talking about. Nothing on Facebook. It's 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 thing. crazy, mate. It's like it's just a poll. I didn't do anything wrong. I just made a poll on British Armstrong. Listen, I could have made one on Alan Armstrong. Did he really go to the moon or not? And I would have loved to have seen the responses there, do you know what I mean? Oh, uh, you would have still, still, still been the worst Borough fan if you spoke about them. That's just it's crazy. Thing. It's like, I remember putting a tweet up saying, listen, you know, I don't think Bridge should be there. And somebody said, oh, AJT is so embarrassing. Why? Because I don't think he should be starting. Get- I mean, listen, right? I looked on Facebook the other week. Uh, or not even the other week, actually. I think it was yesterday. Players' wages have been released. Now, it isn't just Borough that's been released. So you click on the link and go further into the link. I've seen. There's, yeah. there's I didn't ton- look at it though. I didn't. Listen, I looked at Newcastle. I looked at Tottenham. I looked at Man City. I looked at everyone. Right. I seen Paul Pog was on some like three hundred k a week, and I looked at Borough. Right. That should never be released. The fans shouldn't be able to see it because that means the fans can see it. Players can see it. Now, when I'm looking at it, Lee Walker's on five hundred pounds a week at Middlesbrough. Right. What now? And apparently on this list, apparently he's on. I say said Lee Walker five hundred quid. How, how precise is this after tax? We don't know. But Britta Son Belonga, 35 grand a week at Middlesbrough. Yeah? 35 grand a week according to his stat. Two Brack Pom, 17,500. Fletcher, 10,000. So we sat there going, hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Britta Son Belonga's how much more than me? So we asked Pom. So I'm saying, if he doesn't start playing games and he gets to start scoring goals, in 10 minutes, I'm going to send ripples through. The, you know what I mean? It's yeah. crazy, isn't it? It's, but you know I mean, what? That yeah, also mental. gives me hope that I believe Brits leaving in the summer. Thirty-five grand a week, me. I'm scoring over eleven. So let's say, let's say, Brit leaves, and we take ten grand of his wages, or seven grand of his wages. Yeah, and split it to Fletcher and Akpom, or yeah. make make them on even. Even Akpom was seventeen and a half grand. Actually, I didn't think he'd be on seventeen and a half. Mm, this current climate, it, forget the pandemic. I just think this current day that yes. doesn't, that doesn't really shock me. What shocks me is I thought Fletch would be on more. Than yeah, 10 I'm pretty sure he said ten. Like I said, don't quote me on it. I'm gonna take your word for it because. But respect to him for that because he came for a hefty fee, and you know Monk was just chucking money around. Exactly. And I would happily give him fifteen grand. Yeah. To, to stay. Actually, if anybody actually wants to go and read it, it's right there. Look. I mean, thirty-five. Just, just say we take, give five of that to Fletcher. Yeah. And that Pom stays on his current contract. We've got thirty grand there. Well, let me read. Should I actually read through some of these players' wages at Middlesbrough? Yeah, yeah. Some of the ones re- like yeah. you, you feel relevant. Yeah. So this is on the footballleague.com. It's locked. There's actually a thing there. While they play. I say, I don't know how true it is. But listen, for me being a fan and you being a fan, I'm just going to read it out. Now, of course, Ben Lilly's in on loan. He's on £24,500. Sanovic is on 12 and a half. So the players that will contract soon. Stanovic. Yeah. Stanovic. The keeper. Yeah. Yeah, he's on twelve and a half grand a week. Yeah, you know, that's got to be fake. Yeah, uh, Dale but... Fry's on five and a half. Grant Hall's on ten. Nathan Woods on fifteen hundred. Henry Gorson on three. Matt Borders on two and a half. Jed Spence on three and a half. Dice Steele six. Paddy McNair's on twenty. 
George Savile. This is the only bit I really believe because I believe we had to triple his wages when he came to Middlesbrough, George I Savile. Knew, and I know that's right about McNair as well. And he's yeah. worth 20 grams. He's on 17 and a half, George Savile. Johnny Alson's on 25. Lewis Wings on five. Lou, um, Sammy Morsey's on 13.250. Brown's on seven and a half. Mike Savanier's on eight. Marvin Johnson on six. Roberts is on 20. Britt is on 35 grand exactly. Uh, and he runs out of contract obviously at the end of the summer. Ashley Fletcher's yes. on. Obviously, yes. Ashley, Fletcher, <laughs> Ashley Fletcher's also out of contract, obviously, you know, come, you know, you know, come the end of the yeah. season. Two Blackpools on 17 and a half. He's here for another two years. Oh, no, sorry, another three years, sorry. Ashley Fletcher's on 10, and he's out of contract obviously at the end of the summer. Thomas Mayas, the other goalkeeper who's actually on loan, is on two and a half grand a week. And then Stephen Walker is on £500 a week. And that's what I'm saying. If we can see this, and it's actually on the footballleaguefc.com website. But I, but to let's be fair, I think, I'll be honest, I think all the players have spoken, you know, all the players, the strikers that all get on, all the team, they all speak about their wages. I think they know anyway, to be, yeah. to be perfectly honest. If that's Dejan Stanovic is on 12 and a half grand, I'm going to put, I swear to God, I'm going to stick my head through my bedroom wall after this podcast he is absolutely dire I can give him 12 and a half quid I wouldn't even give him a pair of goalie gloves <laughs> he's 12 and a half grand he's Woodgate well we know Woodgate's not alright in his head but what was he thinking there 12 and a half yeah 12 and a half well, he's gone man. he's definitely getting booted. I want to know who the British on blog's agent is to give him 35 grand a week you got to remember, though, that was a, the Gary Monk fraud thing where he just signed yeah. everyone. And then Britt was, if you think about it, Britt was the main man in the championship at the time. I remember yeah, I, true. Was, I was buzzing when we signed him um, and think that was the year we were going to smash the league. Yeah. And we we just about smashed the glass. But, um, yeah, it was that doesn't shock me. It shocks me in a positive way. Fletcher's on ten, gives me a lot of hope that he will sign again. I believe he wants to be at Middlesbrough anyway. Yeah. Um, th that Dejan on twelve and a half. Honestly, I'm going to need a few more Valium after this video. I can't cope with that, mate. Like, honestly. Yeah, twelve and a half. I mean, it's mental. But as I say, you know what I mean. Just away from the wages on Saturday. Um, you know who who would you say impressed you the most on Saturday, player wise? It was your man of the match. I think I gave mine. Um, Although, also, I want to say as well, and I felt harsh for him because everyone's giving him a hard time. I know what Lewis, you're going to say, and I'm going to give him a hard time as well. Lewis Wing. Yeah. I felt sorry for him because Lewis, right? It's all right. I really like him, as I say. I know his dad. I, like, I really like him. I like him as a. I like him. His dad, Jason's, his dad Jason's a quality guy, right? And Lewis is genu genuinely right, one of the nicest lads outside yeah, of football. I like him, and he's. I've, he's replied to me a few times and I like him but yeah. he's just he had, I hate to say it mate he was a one season wonder and he he's not very good at football like, I just felt a bit I felt a bit sorry for him on Saturday I felt like everyone tried to chuck him into the bus I thought no you no know, yeah he was he was the scapegoat he was the scapegoat and I thought to myself on Saturday I thought listen people like he's coming and he doesn't actually know how to play within this team's formation he's never played this season so he's coming, he's trying to get used to it, he's trying to play him behind the strike, he's trying to put himself around midfield. And I think in the end, I think, listen, I don't know if it was pressure or fearing about being subbed or whatever, but, you know, towards the end, you know what I mean, he couldn't make a straight pass. And I felt a bit sorry for him, I thought, I like Lewis Wing, and I think, I think, you know, give him time. Lewis, Lewis Wing, I like, can be a super sub at times, come off the bench and hit a screamer and get you the point. He seen it last season against Stoke City when he came off the bench and scored, I think, I'm pretty sure he made it 2-1 or something, I had to borrow it or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. He, he, he has got something inside him. I just think, you know, he's the sort of player I look at and think, maybe he needs an arm around the shoulder by Warnock. Same way Dyke Steele did. And I reckon he could come yeah, good. Yeah, I'm bowler, I'm bowler. Yeah, I know, but where does he go? Where does he play? I mean, like, this is what I mean. It's Wing, like... Wing played as a number 10 for Sheldon and scored over 50 goals for Sheldon as a number 10. I, I, I understand that, but then you look at, for this season, you've got McNair, you've got you know what I mean? You've got two strikers. Yeah. I think the ten's going to be a hard role to play with the way he likes to play. Sorry, <clears throat> the several 
Morsey and um, Housen. Yeah. I think that's going to be hard. And I just, I think he lacks the overall football, overall footballing ability. Yeah. Of all the players that play in and around that formation. Um, he had a blinder of a season. He can score a worldie, but he doesn't run a lot. He doesn't massively run a lot. Mm -hmm. He doesn't, he's, he's passing, he's right. He's vision. He can see a pass, but he can't make the pass. Yeah. Like is, I wouldn't be against and alone for Lewis wing, you know, like a, and let him play a full season at another club and bring him back in. Not saying we don't need him because right now we're low on numbers. Mm -hmm. With the current team, you know, a full season where he's playing game, game after game after game after game, yeah. finds himself, finds his position, and then says, right, I know what I'm doing now. I know where I'm at. You get the best out of him. Then he gets a fresh, you know, a fresh chance. We don't know how long Warnock's going to be there. You don't know how long Nick, Nick, Nick Nair's going to be there. Sure. How, how soon's going to be there. Do you know what I mean? Um, I just, I, I, I don't think he should have got as much sick as he did, but I think his overall football and ability is, is less than the players around him yeah. currently. I, yes, I, don't it. I don't I don't dislike him in any way. He's not like I, I don't feel the same way I do about Brit about him. I just think he's yeah. got a lot, lot to work on and uh mm -hmm. it'll come, but I, I think alone I think alone would be best for him personally. Yeah, well listen, I can see him alone, but I also thought to myself, maybe he's the reason to why he played and I'm trying to put him down here. Is the same reason for what he said about Patrick Roberts against Blackburn. He wanted to bring Wing on, but he never did. So that's maybe why he started. He thought, do you know what it is? I wanted to give you a game time. I never gave you against Blackburn. I'll tell you what I'll do. Let me hold the line up and you know put you in against Brentford. But uh, who's uh, position did he take? Whose position did he? I think it was Morsey's, but I think he just moved him a bit further. Yeah, Morsey's got a hamstring problem, hasn't he? Well, it's a hamstring, a hamstring injury. He didn't tell Warnock, and then Warnock had to try and discover it himself during yeah. the game. So well, that, I'll tell you what, that's the type of play. I, I know it sounds stupid, but that's the type of player we need at Middlesbrough. Yeah. Like, you know, like, you know, a pocket text, just a man. Mate, mate, he's a lead bit of me. He's a lead bitter all over the place. Just do whatever. Don't care if I'm injured. If it, we, we need to win this game, I'm going to get I've missed, I've missed lead bitter, but now I'm starting to think to myself, all right, well, listen, Sam Morsey. You've got a big, a big eight years to try and fill there. You know, I mean, led bit, a led bit of left his mark at the football club when he was brilliant. And I thought, listen, I loved him. I was so good when he left, but listen, I understood why he left. Do you know what I mean? But I thought to myself, it was the right I mean, time. It was yeah, the right. right time for him to go. But I think Sam Morsey, if you can be anything like led bit, he will become a fan's favourite instantly. He's already one of my most favourite players anyway. Yeah, no, I, I, I think he's brilliant. I can't, can't fault him at all. I think he's class. Yeah, and also, but I, I say also, well, I say I think we've got about seven or eight minutes still to go. Um, but Neil Warnock for potential manager of the month. Now I know it often leaves a curse. If our managers often get the manager of the month, we don't win another game for a couple of months. But he proper deserves it. Him ten games unbeaten. Yeah, give him it. Hundred percent. I mean, he'll he'll probably will get it and. I don't believe Neil Warnock believes in curses. I think we're not dealing with we're dealing with a different cat of fish with Neil Warnock. Yeah. I think we're dealing with a completely different manager. I think he's just he's too solid, too demanding. He's just he's just brilliant. He's just a brilliant manager. I think he's so many teams have missed out on having a Neil Warnock, in my opinion. And I think it would have been I think it's a travesty we never got him when he wanted the job. In what 2014? How has it took us this long to get Neil Warnock? Yeah, no, it's true. A lot of teams, we would have been missed out big time had we not got him. And I think many teams have missed out not having Neil Warnock. Do you know what I mean? Just to, yeah. just to do and say the right things. And I, I can't praise him enough. It's true. I mean, 
And funnily enough, yesterday, I actually had a Facebook memory that said, I've just seen that Neil Warnock's left Cardiff City. Would love him at Middlesbrough. And I was like, I was like a year ago yesterday, I was like, but he's actually here now. I said it, I've got, like, you know, when we've lost a manager and when you look at things, yeah. that I've always said, God, I'd love. And it was always simply, it wasn't because, like, I love Neil Warnock. It was like, I thought he was funny, but just his record, that was the reason I always wanted him. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, true. But then, look at the odds of our next manager and he'd never be there. He'd never be there. It was always like, you know, you'd get like, well, this time we have the Woodgates and things like that, but you'd get like yeah. the Pardews and the Pulisers and you're like, oh, no. That's but, true. Um, but uh, fair, I hope he gets it. Oh, I think as well, hopefully next week, hopefully next week we may have a guest on. <laughs> um, I've got three names in mind. I know it's a bit drifting away from the question. As I say, you know what I mean? This this show is made, especially for guests to sort of come on as well. Yeah, so of course, yeah. Go on. No, of course, I understand. Yeah, it's, that, that's what we originally started doing, wasn't it? it was yeah. For everything, it was for everything and everyone. Of course it was. And that is it. Man, I mean, you, me and you have had some amazing guests on so far. It's been quality each time. It's been such a lot. Andy Campbell, Frank Adrew. I mean, what a way to kick off a podcast that was for me and you to both say, you know what it is? Frank and Drew coming on. Frank and Drew actually liked my photo today on Instagram about this whole podcast, so he still follows it. Frank could be watching, so Frank, if you're watching, how are you going? Did I say well, Frank, actually, Frank, I, you know I, what I mean? Andy Campbell was a legend, and I was yeah. Watching. But Frank and Drew, when I was younger, I mean, I, I used to bother with him so much. It and was amazing, though, having, having both of me, and even today when I seen it, I thought, Frank's just like my thought about us two going live tonight. I wonder if he's going to tune in and actually just give it a little watch and stuff. Yeah, he's probably just sitting there doing nothing. Maybe you're there, Frank. If you're there, drop us a comment. or Yeah, of course. So let, let AJ know you're about. But, yeah, uh, of course, mate. Like I say, he, he actually rang. Believe this or not, like, believe that actually watching this. He actually was messaging me the other day. He said two seconds. He actually rang macaroni for me, but he wouldn't pick up. He rang macaroni to get him on the podcast, and that's an honest fact. I got the message on my phone. He actually rang my Simon Macaroni the other day to try and get him on the podcast, but he changed his number. <laughs> if he can get older Macaroni, then I'm going to break curfew. I'm going to break the COVID rules. I'm flying over. I promise you. I promise you right now. He actually rang. He actually physically rang Macaroni for his other no, day. I mean, but I want to kiss you. Yeah, head. yeah, yeah. It's crazy. It's crazy. But I say, I'm not going to reveal any sort of guest names. Joe will know who they are. Oh, yeah, no, don't do that. We'll leave to it. people watching, don't there's three names. Two huge names, two ex player players, that's all I'll give you. And the other one is actually a pretty big YouTuber as well. Who actually, uh, you know, obviously, you know, he's actually a football vlogger. You might not be familiar, but obviously I tell you who it is. Good friend of mine, but listen, he's a top guy. Um, but like I say, um, <laughs> at least fans just commented. But listen, right, let me get through some comments just towards the end here. A up from Scarland, Barnsley fan. I'm actually doing all right this season, Barnes. He's not doing too badly. He's doing well. Well. Uh, a Brexit channel, channel has actually said hard to beat Borough, but we need to start winning. Wins will come. The wins will come, hopefully, against Norwich. The wins will come. Um, I guess this one could be both of us. The one and only um, Blake Nugent FC. What a name that is. It's all one word. Said AJ, but obviously, you know, I'm actually going to change it. AJ and Joe, who's your favourite Borough player? Mine, I've got a couple. But of course, you know what I mean? My boy Marvin Johnson, but for me, it's always been Johnny Alston. I think he's wicked. Who's yours, Joe? It's on Belonga, I reckon. No, I was probably say Johnny Houston or Pelton, yeah. Yeah, Johnny Houston for me for his edge. Uh, for his, yeah. for all right. Yeah. And to the Leeds fan, credit to Bamford. I didn't think he had it in him. I was I was giving Leeds fans some big stick towards the end of the season saying, well, yeah. I've, been all my, I've got one of my best, best friends as a Leeds fan. And I know a lot of Leeds fans and they said, He'll be gone straight away. As soon as we go up, he missed too many chances. He's not good enough. And I said, I agree. I don't think he's good enough. Yeah, Bamford smashed it, to be fair. Proved me wrong. He's proved them wrong. And fair play. And fair play for you coming to a borough podcast and being respectful. Yeah, he's actually been, yeah, yeah, that's the thing, actually. Do you know what I mean? He's actually been respectful to the channels of fair play. Fair play to Bamford. He proved me wrong. He's probably proved a lot of Leeds fans wrong. Probably more Leeds fans than Borough fans, to be fair. So credit to exactly. him. Exactly. But like I say, and uh, before we go, then prediction okay. for tonight's game: England v Ireland. I'm going to go for England three 0 What's your prediction? England three 0 
Yeah, I'm just putting out. I don't know, man. I say England, England uh, are going to watch what I go for right now. I think 3 0. I think I hope Jack Grealish plays. Um, yeah. Or is he playing? The team will be out now. The team's out sure. now. Yeah. I'm not sure if he's playing. If anyone knows if he's playing, let me know. I'll try and get hold of it quickly before we finish up. I hope he's playing. I think he deserves to play for sure. Yeah, like, mate, Grealish was unbelievable the other day as well against Villa. Darkade doesn't like him, does he? Pretty much. No, for some reason. I don't know why. He's not, very, he's not a very good judge of character, is he? Uh, yeah, Green is just starting, to be fair. Brilliant, brilliant. Okay. Pope, James, Saka, Keane, Maguire, Mings, Mount, uh, Winks, Calvert Lewin, Sancho, and Jack Green is a fairly strong team, to be fair. So Mings needs to be starting every game for me at the yeah. back. And uh, how good is Reese James, by the way, just while we're on it? What a player. Yeah, yeah. I do like Reese James. I like Tyrone Mings as well. I think Mings. I don't think he gets enough credit, but I actually really like Tyrone Mings. I think he's brilliant. I mean, we we have been exact. We're not exactly sport for choice at centre back, are we? Haven't got no. <laughs> are we? No. Just... I do. You know who I do like, and you're gonna like this as well. I like Connor Cody a lot. I think love he's him, wicked. Love him. Love him but, I think uh, he's a wicked defender. Even if I wasn't, a, you know, like a, a a lover of wolves, I would. I would. Oh, I, I think he's brilliant. I mean, there's you know people talking about him being. In the top three best in the league, along with Laporte and and Van Dijk. Yeah, I like Van Cody. The way I think he's brilliant. I think he's class. Um, I mean, what am I right in saying? England that have not lost the, not conceded the goal at every game he's played. Is that what it is? It's yeah, mental. Every, every game he started, they've not conceded the goal. Crazy stuff, mental. So there you go. So what's your prediction then? Man's three 0 We all going three 0 There you go. Now we're going to go on. Now we've got to go on to the, are we gonna we're gonna do a prediction for the norm now we're we gonna wait. We could do that one next week. We'll do it next week, that one. All right, no worries. Just I'm keep, not, keep I'm, it in I'm, mind, British Humble Longer might improve this week. No, no, mate. <laughs> we'll forget about that. We will never no you're never getting that from me, brother. I'll tell you what. But is there any more comments? No comments. No, nah, I mean that's it. It's a quiet night tonight. You found the comments. Oh, it's quiet night, but at least we got it done, mate. That's it. Joe, cheers for joining us, people. Thanks for the questions. Thank you very much, everyone. See you. See you. Next when, are we, week. when are we back? Next week. I don't know. We'll have to arrange a day. Well, hopefully we get. Be all on social media. Don't yes. Talk about it. Joe's link is inside the description for all of his uh, socials and it's also on the screen. They, and thank you to the people that added me from this that wished me happy yeah, birthday yeah. a few weeks ago by the way they just want to say that because I don't, I don't know any of you but I accept the views there you go thank Legend you very much and up the borough cheers Rich I right, see you later thanks people peace yeah. out